Now we have a way to control the user's access to this application using gates. I think now is a good time to start introducing some testing into our application. Now, as I said in the previous video, testing is a massive subject and it's far more than what I can cover in this 20 minutes or so video. So I'm just going to be skimming over the basics, but there is a lot more to it than what I'm going to be showing you. So there are multiple levels to testing and I've got a graphic here from another website. I'll just show you on screen now. And this just shows you the different levels of testing. So you can see down the bottom here, we have unit testing, and these are the smallest possible tests that are designed to run quickly and just test a single part of the application. So we don't actually currently have anything in place that would warrant a unit test at the moment, but imagine maybe if you had some e-commerce code that worked out the shipping on a basket and you had a method for that, where you'd pass in the total and then it would add the shipping cost and then return you the new total. So you could write a single unit test for that one method where you pass a number in and you say, I expect this to add say three pounds onto the total of the order and then return me this number. And you could test that using a unit test. So the code is isolated, it does one thing and you can just test that one thing and make sure that one thing works. Now integration tests is the next level and integration tests test multiple units together. So if we just stick with our e-commerce example, this would be maybe somebody adding an item to the basket and then it calculating the shipping. So you're testing a couple of things there. You're testing whether it can add something to the basket, that it totals it correctly, then it adds the shipping correctly. So you're testing multiple smaller parts of your code together in one test. Now this is where I find the most value in testing applications is the integration tests. It's a group of methods that add together to create that user experience. So these are still relatively fast tests, but there's also the next level called system testing. And this tends to be the level where you actually test a full end user flow, including the UI. And this usually involves something like Selenium, automates and emulates a user's flow for the application. So sticking with the e-commerce example, the system would load up the full user UI and you'd check that certain things are in the UI, like you can click and add item to basket and then make sure that item is added to the basket and then maybe you're redirected to the basket and then it will check that the item is in the basket and it's displaying the price and the shipping, etc. correctly. As you can imagine, because this is booting up a full web browser to achieve this, the system tests do start taking up more time. But the further you go up this pyramid, the slower the tests get. And then finally, the acceptance testing. This is generally done by a QA team and people in real life. So these are normally done by maybe a room of random testers. And you say, test this website. And then you watch over them to see if the user can work out the flow, if there's any errors that come up or things that the user can't find. So as a developer, a lot of the time, you will just be focusing on the unit testing and the integration testing. These are the two types of tests you're most likely to write and you're most likely to come across in an application. So if we just have a look out the box on a Laravel install, they've already set up testing for us with PHP unit. And if you come down to the test folder here and open this up, you can see we have two folders. We have a feature folder and a unit folder. Now the unit folder is for the unit tests and the feature folder is for the integration tests. And you can see there Laravel uses the term feature. You'll find a lot of the learning materials refer to these as integration. Now I'll probably flip back and to between the word integration and feature throughout this video, but it essentially means the same thing a feature test is the same as an integration test. It's just the wording. And then inside of here, inside of unit test and also inside of feature test, we have example tests. These are just generated out of the box by Laravel, although they don't really have much meaning and they're not really testing anything useful within the application. So let's just actually run these first so we can actually see the tests running. So over in our command line and in the root of our project, we can just run PHP artisan test. And you can see that has run our two tests. It's run our unit test first and it's passed. And it's also run our feature test and it has passed that as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create our own test to expand upon this test suite. The first one I'm actually going to do 
is actually really simple, pretty much mimics the example test that's already there within Laravel. Let's just do this so we can see a very basic working example. So I'm going to do a PHP artisan make colon test. And then you need to give this test a descriptive name. And this is so when it's run by PHP unit like here, you have some context of what the test actually means. So I'm going to call this one home page test. I'm just going to hit enter on this. Now over in our project under feature, we can see we have our new home page test.php file. Now let's open this. And you can see here, this has built out a skeleton of a basic test for us. We can see up here our classes homepage test and we have a test in here called test example. Now the naming of your tests are important. So the function has to start with the word test in lowercase and then you can either write as camel case or you can use underscores. So pretty much the accepted standard across the PHP world and in the PHP unit documentation and also in the Laravel documentation is to use underscores in the test name here. As you can see, the artisan generate command uses camel case, but it doesn't matter. You can use whichever one you want. They'll both work. I'm going to be using underscore for this series. So I'm just going to rename this from test example. I'm going to rename this to test underscore homepage loads. So you can be as descriptive as you like with these. And the more description you put in the method name, the better it is to track down when one of these fails. Now what is happening here, we're sending a get request to forward slash and we're certain that we get a 200 response. So it's a pretty basic test. We're just checking that we go there and the server sends us a 200 response. So let's just run this now in the terminal. Then it's going to rerun PHP artisan test. And you can see now it's picked up our new homepage test and it's passed. Now if we actually jump back over to our website, we can see we're actually loading a view in here and it's saying hi from index. But what we can do is we can actually check whether the test is getting that page back. So let's just copy this text hi from index and back over in our test, we'll just come down to a new line here and we can say response. Then we can say assert and we want to assert that we see the text and we want to see that text hi from index. So we just save on this now and rerun the test. You can see that still passes. So let's just change this view now so we can see that we've introduced a bug. So under resources, views, we want to open up index.blade.php. And you can see here we have hi from index. Now let's just get rid of that hi from index and just say hi. So now we've changed this code in a way that our test is going to get something else that it wasn't expecting to see. So let's just run this test again now. So we're going to be PHP artisan test. And you can see Two of our tests have passed, but one has failed. And you see here our home page loads test has failed. And it's saying it's failed that it's asserting that. And you can see here it's, this is what it's seeing. And it's only seeing high. And it's saying it taints high from index. So it tried to assert it could see that and it couldn't. So it has failed. So let's just put that back now in our view. And then just rerun our tests again now just to make sure. And there we go, we're back working again. So that is a very basic example. Now let's do something a little more complex. Let's test a user trying to log into our system and then we'll check whether they have permissions to access certain parts of the website. So we're essentially checking the login form and we're also checking that our gates are working correctly. So over in our terminal, let's do a PHP artisan make colon test and we're going to make tests called login page test. Let's open this file up and I'm just going to get rid of this example test for now. And then let's create a new public function. And this one's simply going to check that our user can just log in. So we need to start with test as always. And we can just say test user can log in using the login form. And that's what I mean about being descriptive about the test. So when this runs, PHP unit will output this method name and in the line as the test is running. So you've got a better understanding of what is actually happening in the test without having to remember what every test is actually doing. You can just read it there on the screen. So the first thing we're going to actually have to do here is create a new user. We're going to mock one up for this test and then try and log them into the system. 
the first thing we want to do in this method is actually create a new user in our system. And it's probably worth noting now that when we run these tests, this is going to run against our development database. So as we're creating users here, it's actually going to insert them into our development database. Now, for the sake of this series and the fact that it's only our development database, this isn't really too much of an issue. But maybe later in the series or even in a dedicated testing series, I will show you how, how to set up a test database just for running the tests. And a lot of people simply just do an in-memory database or a simple SQLite database for this. And if that is something that you do want to explore, in the root of your project, you can see we have a .env file and we also have a .env.example file. You can just create a new one of those and call it .env.testing. And then inside of there, put the credentials in for your test database rather than your development database. And then whenever you run the PHP arts and test, it'll run it against the .env.testing config. So whatever configuration you've got in there, your tests will run using those, so it won't touch your development database. But for the sake of this introduction video, I'm just going to leave it on the development database because it doesn't really make too much difference to me. But we've already introduced you to the factory concept, so we can just carry on using our user factory to create a new user here. So let's just create a new variable called user. And then up the top here, I'm just going to use, and I'm going to use app models and then bring in our user model. And then we can say this user variable equals a new instance of that user model. And we want to call the factory method on that user model. And we're gonna create a new user. So that'll create a new user for us in our local database that we can now actually try and log in with. But the next thing we want to do is send a post request to our login form and then save the response. Let's create a new variable here called response. I'm going to set this equal to, and we're going to say this, and this time, instead of using get like we did in the previous test, we're going to be sending a post request. And this post request is going to go to forward slash login. And then we need to pass in an array of the data that we want to pass over. So to log in, we need to send over a email address and a password, just like we would enter in the login form. So we can say, send an email over, and this email is going to be equal to user email. And this user is obviously the one we just created here. So it's going to be the new user's email. And then as a second parameter, we also want to send over the password. And the password by default, when we're creating users with the factory is password. And now there's two things we can actually test for here. We can test whether this user is authenticated, and we can also check that the application redirects us as we expect. But now we've sent the post off, we can say this, and there's a method on here called a cert authenticated. What this does is it just checks whether there is currently a logged in user. So if we sent the correct details off to the login here and it's logged in, then this will assert to true. And finally, once a user logs in, it should redirect them back to forward slash. So now we can check on that response variable and we can say assert. We want to assert that we get a redirect. We want to make sure that we get redirected back to our forward slash page. Now let's run this in the console. So I'm doing a PHP artisan test. And you can see now our login page has been tested and it's working. Okay, so we now want to test whether our gates work. So this is going to follow the same flow and there's going to be some code repetition here. But there are techniques that we can use where we can create a user and then use it throughout all of our tests. But that is well beyond the scope of this video. So for now, I'm just going to copy and paste our current method and alter it accordingly. And then maybe later on in the series, we'll come back and revisit and maybe do some more in-depth testing. Because at the moment, I'm just scratching the surface trying to keep this video under 20 minutes long. So I'm just gonna copy this function here. I'm just gonna copy it down. And then I'm gonna change the name of this to test user can not access admin page. So when this user is being created here, we're not actually assigning any roles to them. So although they're creating an account, they shouldn't be allowed to access our user edit page, for example. 
So down here, instead of checking that they're authenticated, because we've already done that test in this previous one here, so we know the login form works. So it's now hitting this point, and I'm going to say this, and then we're going to send a get request. We're going to send a get request to our admin page and our user page. So that's the page that lists out all of our users and paginates them. But we don't want our normal users accessing this. Our gate shouldn't allow this newly created user access to that page. And then down here, we can leave this because we want to make sure if the user is trying to go to this page, that they just get redirected back to the home page so they can't go any further. So let's just try this now. So we can do a PHP artisan test again. And you see there now our second test on our login test class has run. User cannot access the admin page. So now we know our gate is also working in the way that we're expecting. It's not allowing a basic user with no rules access to our admin pages on our website. So again, I'm just going to copy this method down now, and we're going to test the reverse of this. We're going to test that a user can access the admin page. So I'm just going to copy this method down here because we can use a lot of this because we can reuse a lot of this boilerplate code. And we're going to rename this one to test user can access admin page. And again, we want to create a user, but then this time we want to attach the admin role to this user. So we can do that by saying user, this newly created user, and we can call our roles relationship that we set up on the user model. And then we can call the attach method, just like we did in previous videos. And we're gonna attach the role of one, which currently in our system is the admin role. Now you could improve this by getting the roles out of the database first, using another elegant query here, and then passing the ID in to attach rather than hard coding a value. But for the sake of keeping this video short and under 20 minutes, I'm just going to hard code it now. But if you want to improve on this, then that's something you can implement if you want. Now we've got a new user and they've got the admin role. We want to log in again, but we don't want to save the response of this. We just want to log in. And then we want to go to the admin user page again. And we want to save the response of this. So let's create a new variable here called response. So we should be able to go to that page. And then on that page, we have a title of users. So we just want to check that we can see that title. So inside of the response, which is this page that we've just gone to, we want to assert, and we don't want to assert a redirect. We want to assert that we see the text and we want to see the text of user as that's the title text that we've got on this page. I've just noticed I've made a little mistake here. It's not admin user, it's admin users. So I'll have to change that in this test as well. So the URL is forward slash admin forward slash users. Okay, so that method's complete. We're creating a new user. We're attaching the admin role. We're logging the user in. And then we're trying to access the admin users page, which only our admins should be able to access. And we want to make sure that we can see the text user, which is the page title. So now let's just run these tests. So over in our terminal, we can run PHP artisan test. And you can see there now all of our test passes. So we know that a standard user cannot access our admin pages, but we also know an admin can access the admin page. So now we have an automated way of testing whether our gates are working. So in the next video, we'll look at the user creation in a little bit more detail, where we'll be sending the user an email to let them know that an account has been created and we'll also send them a password reset link so they can set their own password before logging into the application don't forget to like this video if you liked it also don't forget to subscribe so you get notifications of new videos also i'm over on twitter uh, give me a follow there because i'll be giving updates out when new videos are coming and also if you like these videos and you'd like to give me a little bit of a tip or buy me a coffee then I also have a Patreon page. Any donations are much appreciated. All the links for all of these are down in the description.